Welcome back to everybody. Uh, I will uh, leave the word over to you, Stein uh, Sørensen, uh, CFO, Window Master. I think you will present your case, but also we have talked a lot about the political environment and, and I think uh, maybe being on the building side, there's a lot of regulatives that could support you in the future, but I'm sure we will hear more. So I will hand the word over to you, Stein. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you for having this opportunity to present uh, Window Master at this uh, Green Tech uh, seminar. Uh, it's a very interesting topic. Um, just uh, a fly into Window Master. Uh, I'll just give a, a kind of a, a overhead or snapshot of what is Window Master and where are we heading. Uh, actually, Window Master is a, a plus 30 years old uh, business. Uh, we have been uh, around for yeah for for several years and 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 been uh, uh, running around in the building industry for for quite some years um, but actually we see that we are becoming a, a kind of a have a sweet spot into the building industry especially with the gene uh, green agenda so we have our green deal in in, in uh, europe and we also are a lot of uh, focus in uh, north america uh, which uh, really gives us some uh, some great opportunities um just very uh, quickly on on the financial and actually also on on esg kpis because we actually set uh, some targets for ourselves both financially but also on the sustain sustainability uh, agenda uh, going forward so we have uh, ambitions going financially into 25 but on sustainability we are even further into 2030 uh on on kpis and and focus on that and that but Irina will come much more back to to that when uh, a little bit further into the presentation um but we actually in 2022 set uh, a new strategy which is called accelerate core uh which really focus on what we are good at uh, and that's also what is put on the slide here where we have uh, we would really try to to focus and emphasize on the on the market drives um there's a lot of things going on in the in the market uh, right now that supports uh, our uh, presence uh, and and actually our potentials going going forward. Um, one major issue because there are market conditions uh, changing in, in in Europe and but but especially in uh, North America uh, we we see a lot of potentials. Uh, we are the only one with the uh, own production that are based in uh, North America at uh, at the moment. And that gives us uh, some, some good uh, opportunities and, and we have a, a strong pipeline already in place and we are we are feet on the ground in, in, in North America. So both on the West Coast in, in US and also in the East Coast. Uh, and we are also uh, having a warehouse, etc. So we have a full setup uh, ready and supporting the, that growth uh, development in, in North America, where we have quite uh, high ambitions. Uh, just quickly on our solutions, uh, we are kind of yeah twofold. Uh, we have we have uh, hardware, motors, uh, opening and closing windows, and for that we can we have the three solutions uh, that can. Uh, and especially the, the the one called natural ventilation is is actually a very strong uh, uh, solution we have uh, available, and, and because the potential are, are so big, uh, and here the the competition are are are, are, are interesting, and, and we have good good solutions on the mixed mode and smoke uh, and heat. It's a more uh, red ocean, you could say. Uh, there's a competition in in in, the, in those markets, uh, but we are also uh, pretty strong. Uh, the the most interesting part for us is also the software side. So we are controlling, uh, and as indicated here, we we actually can control a lot of uh, colleagues in in the business. So the solar shading, cooling, heating, lightning, uh, and also mechanical ventilation. Uh, so where it doesn't have to be our uh, hardware, but we can we can actually uh, monitor and control. So we have a strong. Um, uh, climate in 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 buildings uh, and that's our our solution um that was a very quick uh, fly into to window master and uh, if there's a question for that uh, you're welcome to, to put that at the end but i, I will actually hand over because it's it's what is today is a, a more interesting or it's all our work we do uh, within uh, sustainability and uh, and esg etc and we are we are really deep diving in, into that but i'll hand over the words to to Irina. 
Yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Irina Torres. I'm a Group Sustainability Director. I've joined Window Master in the beginning of March. Thank you so much for having us today. And I'll give you um, an insight on how we work with sustainability. And actually what I wanted to start with is um, uh, the, our handprint and why we th think that we have a strong position on the market uh, in the uh, especially with the green, green agenda is because first and foremost, a building accounts for roughly 40% of uh, global energy consumption on of which two thirds of that are goes to cooling and to ventilation and, and the lighting. And that's why as transition for net zero emissions, uh, building is uh, urgent and we, we see a strong position in, in, in solving that, that problem. Um, um, as mentioned, um, we see sustainability in, in Window Master is, is strongly embedded in uh, in our business, in our core business, and it is at the heart of everything we do. So we we contribute to making uh, buildings more sustainable, um, and this is uh, just some of the statistics, uh, examples of what do we address. So it's both on energy efficiency and savings and CO2 emissions, but also milk, making buildings more um, uh, indoor environment um, healthier, um, as well as uh, a low cost uh, of, of installation. Um, so now a little bit about our sustainability strategy. Although we are in an SME, we want to be a front runners in the sustainability and agenda. And uh, in 2020, we um, developed a uh, sustainability strategy, which um, include milestone targets for 25. Um, and uh, our purpose, of course, to further integrate this to our business. So um, as you can see, this is um, in both on the, on the emissions, on the circularity, um, and uh, also when you look at that the main the other main initiatives here is of course a decoupling um growth for without to, to ensure that we're using less natural resources and sort of to secure our license to grow in the future which we think is uh, is very important um then if i move to the next slide so in 2022 uh, we had our SBTI targets approved, um, which also was very ambitious for um, a, a, an SME. We're one of the first companies, SME companies in uh, Denmark that uh, have committed to SBTIs. And we've chosen the most ambitious um, uh, scenario with 46% uh, reduction in our scope one and two. Um, and um, even though we, we don't have to set targets for scope three, um, we did that uh, as well, because we believe that uh, this is, this is of course, very important. Um, and then the last uh, but not least uh, is um, our circle of promise. Uh, and uh, as a manufacturer of the, of the ventilation system for buildings, this was very important for us to make all the efforts um, to reduce our environmental footprint. And it, of course, not only goes to the um, emission, but also to the resource use. And that's why we focused on uh, um, um, piloting the um, uh, circle of promise. We call this circle of promise. And we launched it. Uh, and. The, in the core of it, we promise that our customers that we will take back all our products um, uh, when they need to be replaced in the, in the, in connections with the renovation projects, and when the system is scrapped, for example, um, and that would both save customers from collecting and sorting waste, and uh, and then at the same time having scrap lying around the construction site, and of course it uh, we. We have intentions to to put it back in the in the in the production. So, but for now, and again, as a as a, a small company, we of course there is a complexity and uh, you know different requirements and the infrastructure complexity and the markets. So, for for us initially, this uh, this would apply in Denmark, and then uh, we have a intention to expand this to the to the other European markets, and. Um, this is the start um however we we see a lot of potential in in this um to both um you know contribute to to minimizing our footprint and resource use but at the same time uh put the resources back into the production and and not look at it as a as a waste anymore but rather than as a as a resource that we are taking back um 
yeah that was a little introduction from from my side um perfect uh, if, if if i may ask a question here uh, i think uh, are we ready for the q a thing maybe i should yeah really that's, wanna... that's perfect perfect yeah i, I think uh, looking at uh, both on the taxonomy side which we presented in the start of this and and this the circular economy is getting more and more written in to 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 kind of the agenda and and to the regulations so it is this only a com is this a competitive advantage is it savings for you or or or, or how to understand I, I know we want to do good for the for the environment and and, and of course we want to do that but so why are you now starting to focus uh, a, a little bit on this uh, circular uh, economy is that simply because that's giving you a huge competitive advantage also well, both there. I think there are several drivers, and and besides that, you know, the, all the upcoming uh, regulations and and what our customers are showing interest in, we we see that we're looking at potential how we can reusing uh, the components uh, in our products, and by that, hoping to also reduce, um, yeah, the, the the price of our products eventually. Yeah. But again, this is a, you know we are we are in a, in a uh, we were in the very start, and there's still lots of learnings. But initially, our model is very cost neutral. But but we are looking for the potential that can lie in uh, in reusing uh, for long term, and 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 the same, and that's why you know adding to a lower bottom line. So, um, the most important thing, however, here is that we are getting started, and that we know it is good for business. It's good for our customers, and uh, yeah, it's 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 good for the world. So it is uh, very much. Uh, yeah, Women. our focus <laughs> yeah. in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Steen, but, yes, just, just a comment. Sorry, uh, I, I think because we, we are working very hard on this, but but we also sense and feel really this is a very very conservative business we're in, the building industry. So this about talking about circular economy, etc. Uh, that is the. We have to repeat that story many, many times before we really get uh, get uh, support also from customers. But also going back into the supply chain is also uh, challenging. And, and then we are really, I think we are working uh, uh, quite hard and put a lot of resources in really to, 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 to get moving uh, because we really want to, to be ambitious here on, on this, uh, in this area. And then the, how is the development in regulations regarding energy savings? I, I guess, you know, your product, as, as the regulation gets harder and harder on how much a building can uh, emit, uh, you guess more and more uh, cost efficient uh, or, or need to have to, to build a building like that instead of with a HVAC, right? So any sense on is it moving faster uh, when, when when do you really get into where you say the green agenda on the, uh, it, it's, simple, it's hard to get around uh, natural ventilation uh, if you understand so can you speak a little bit about that development right now was that i guess this is more question for me yeah um, I think so, uh, um well we're we definitely see that, of course, there's going to be a, a focus in uh, in the in the upcoming future, and we are working to to calculate our baseline scenarios and where uh, to have actually exactly data and and facts and how much do we um, do we contribute. But it is very much case by case um, for every building is uh, is different. So it is um, yeah, it is an in an ongoing focus and ongoing work in the, in, in in the company. But uh, and also uh, we we do see for for more and more projects, uh, especially actually in the US, we we need to be able to support what is the potential saving, for example, compared to an AVAC uh, solution. Uh, so uh, because for school public buildings, they 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 really they would like to have that documentation as part of the project. Uh, so so we kind of we also very willing, but we also forced into this. And there we, yeah, we do have a competitive advance because we we, we have uh, all the capabilities in-house to, to, to support this uh, this business. But I will also say it is not that something that, that uh, yeah, tomorrow everything will, will skyrock, uh, but but you, you will see this will increase further and further over the coming years. Uh, and, and, and the potential are still enormous uh, that that's what we we see if you just tap into a small portion of the whole avac uh, market yeah that that's uh, millions and billions of of, of dollars uh, of uh, of a market so the, the potentials are, are big here that that's why we are so dedicated and focused on on this 
And then there, there's, of course, also a downside. If you, if you look at a very interesting market, maybe not a, 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 a exploding one, that may be good. Uh, but there's a question here. Any last player enter, entering your market due to the green agenda? You know, Now uh, you have been doing this for 30 years, but, but now it, it kind of looks like there's a, probably a more clear pathway to that. So do you see any competitors uh, entering the market because of that uh, bigger competitors or are you still too much a niche uh, to uh, and has the knowledge that, that it's hard to uh, to get get I, into? I, it's a it's a very interesting question, and and not knowing exactly what the big players are are doing exactly, but but we do see some big players really moving and and, and investigating into the whole building uh, economy and 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 saving. Uh, and the big players are, I think, they are pretty obvious uh, who they are in in the building, and they. They are investigating, but but they maybe also see this is not something that's going to happen tomorrow, but maybe within within the next five years. So they're getting ready, really, to 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 move. But we don't see that as a as a disadvantage because I mean we have our solutions, we have our knowledge uh, in house, and that that's built up over many years. So so even though you are big, yeah, you you of course you you can invest heavily in resources, but but still we 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 are we are there to support, and and we have a good co collaborations with. With the big players, but but uh, I, I sense or we sense that they are they will they are interested in in, in this uh, area of, of the uh, building market also and and for sure will be ready to take their uh, part of the of the pie uh, later on. And then then there maybe there's a question maybe to Irina uh, 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 and that's how strong a documentation do we have for this claim of the you know between forty to seventy one I guess on. On, on, it, it differs from building to buildings, right? And, and and the CO2 claim, I guess, gets more and more important. So so how strong are your documentation and how do you document that if if, if I want to build a special building, uh, I investigate by you and saying maybe what cost savings can you have? So so how how, how specific can you be? Uh, and of course, Dean, you also mentioned it in, in the public system, right? So so a little bit about understanding how you document that uh, claim and uh, how you works with it in your business model. Uh, well, first and foremost, I think our main purpose when we talk about sustainability is that it needs to be fact-based and that it needs to be data-driven. That goes both in terms of our footprint and also in terms of our handprint. So this is a, this is a big focus from our side to uh, to make sure that we and, – and the complexity, as you mentioned itself, it's, it's not that we're just selling a product. We are selling a solution which is very dependent on the context of, of where the building is and what type of building it is and uh, and 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 so on so it, it, it right now we are working on on developing again as i mentioned different uh, baseline scenarios uh, that would be used for uh, the, the the most uh, of course there is the variety of uh, you know you, you can capture all the different uh, varieties that there is but and again for the baseline cases we will be uh, we are developing right now um, this will be all uh, documented and uh, moving forward, of course, it will be taken case by case uh, basis, but it depends on the, how deep you want to go into the, in, in, into the knowledge because for, is it the, for the general public or is it on the, you know, on the particular client that would be more um, particular case that would be, of course, um, more uh, in-depth um, calculations. So we have a, a specialist in the department in, uh, in the, in the company that's uh, will be that's looking into that, that. yeah but I, again I this is, is this when you are in a, in a, in a where there's 40 degrees outside temperature always or, or yeah yeah exactly there's a there's a big there's a big there's definitely a big, there's a big variety but i just want to say that for us it's is is absolutely crucial uh, to to make sure that everything that every claim that comes out of uh, window master that is based on on the on the data and on the fact and this is what and and we you know, uh, welcome the sort of audit approach moving forward, as this is all where it's moving. So, of course, we we uh, we are we want to we want to to make sure that yeah that we are very concrete. And then uh, a question for you, Stein, because I think you mentioned that you have your supply chain uh, on board in the in the US. And I, as I recall, we've talked about it some other times. None of your competitors have it, but. And, and can you talk a little bit about, because I made my start presentation here, we are actually in a trade war with the U.S. on this green side, you know, if, if it's not built in the U.S., it's not going to be so. Is that, is that also by your products or so? so for, sure, that 
for sure. I mean, they, 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 it is preferred that you can put a stamp on made in the US for sure. We, we see that. Uh, but but as there are no local producers at the moment, that there are no alternatives. Uh, but we ha we we are we are working. Uh, we have a, a roadmap, a plan to 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 go uh, one day and have a full uh, fledged uh, setup for for North America uh, and to be able to supply the whole North American market. Uh, and that that's that's in our plans and in our ideas. And it, it just requires uh, yeah step by step that we we get there. Uh, yeah. and, and as I said, right now we actually have a supply uh, center uh, in North America so with a local warehouse so we can we can supply and, and support our, our, our customers there. So that's the first step. And then it's also about finding local suppliers. So uh, the whole uh, chip industry uh, finding, uh, can we also get the suppliers there? Uh, but but we also there, there's a lot of potential fundings. I think also the other Danish companies have have found that out that you 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 can let a, get a lot of fundings uh, to to actually to to be present uh, locally in 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 uh, US. And it could be that we should go that route also uh, to, to 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 get uh, fi uh, financial support for for it. We're willing to to, to take the, those steps also. Yeah. So, so the North American market, huge opportunities there. For sure. As also to look a little bit about it, and 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 you, you know, uh, as you said, it's still a, a small niche industry, and and you're one of the few players, you know. And I, I know maybe it's a little bit uh, uh, too positive to ask, but but you know, regulations change very fast. Uh, if, what if what, what if this market is actually going to move much faster? I, are you able to step up? Uh, to, to I know you now have targets of 10 to 15 percent growth. That's very very strong in many many yeah. industries, especially the building industry. But what if it should move faster? You know, maybe always. You know, uh, would would you be able to step up a little bit on on your supply chain, your production side, and everything? Uh, I, I would say our our business model is is very agile and 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 very simple. I mean, we are light asset uh, setup, uh, and 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 we could easily increase uh, capacity and uh, yeah. So and the whole supply chain as such is not uh, complicated uh, it will be more uh, training of, of installations etc and partners uh, locally uh, to, to actually do the installation side but for, for the business model that that we have in place i think we are very scalable uh, or we are very scalable uh, so we, we we actually don't see that as a as a major uh, problem as such but uh, we are we're ready to face that uh, that potential uh, yeah. And, and I know maybe it's not a question for this year because, uh, you know, the construction industry looks a little bit yeah. uh, dampened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm still seeing this as, 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 as you have mentioned many, many times that this is a niche that could, uh, of course, it would be better if it was growing, but it's still a niche that, uh, that is growing even if the construction industry in, is kind of in a, a little bit of a stalemate. Yeah, right? it, it has a little bit of its own life. Yeah. Uh, in, in, and, and we, we still, I think we said that uh, several times also, that the pipeline is fully intact. Uh, again, 25% of our pipeline is in North America, uh, it is, and it continues to increase uh, and, and, and go ahead. And our order intake is also uh, uh, on a very nice uh, base. And or a backlog also, so we we feel comfortable. As, so the, the the you would say the the seasonalities or the swings in the building industry that that can be very tough uh, is is uh, much less on 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 our part of of, uh, of this business, and that that is uh, that that's a that's a good spot to be in uh, in a, in a niche market, uh, especially when things goes uh, maybe a little bit uh, slower uh, in the rest of the market. So there there for sure is an, an upside for us. Uh, Perfect. I think we will end on that uh, note, uh, Steen. <laughs> thank you to you, Irina, and thank you to you, Steen, for taking us through the, the business case of your company and a 